<laughs> that's true, that's true. <laughs> she has been in the limelight for years, but her star still shines bright. When we engage Dr. Margaret Blikchigozi, her responses are punctuated by a loud infectious laugh that quickly draws you in. <laughs> Typical. <laughs> she readily agrees to share her life story despite the countless interviews she has had. Margaret Chigozi's skin color comes from her grandfathers, one of whom came to Uganda as part of the Queen's Army and the other as a white adventurist hunter. They married Baganda women and settled here. She grew up the only girl among four boys. You have to fight for everything, <laughs> even if it's doing the girly thing and sulking and reporting to your dad or your mom. I was spoiled, I must say. Being the only girl, her father was very protective of her. She always faulted other women for not working smart and hard to rise up. I became a gender activist very, very late. How could I ever, and I'm really ashamed of myself, think that the other women were just not succeeding? They came from different circumstances. When she retired as executive director of Uganda Investment Authority about three years ago, she went headlong into farming, which she is passionate about. It's a business. I intend to make money. Dr. Chigozi sits on the board of Akina Mama Africa, a small community-based organization seeking to create space for African women to network, share skills, identify skills, and speak for themselves. A lot of the things you do, you don't even know that they came from your culture. They came from the patriarchal system we are also used to. You come into a boardroom and you serve the tea. No, we are women leaders. That's not what we do. While the African woman has made great strides towards achieving the 50-50 balance after the 1995 Beijing conference, she feels there is still a lot to do. Kajina, Musisi, we're really proud of them, but how many are they? We don't have enough women in the corporates. We don't have enough women owning large businesses. She studied human medicine at Macquarie University and in her class of 120 students, only 11 were girls. Dr. Chigozi practiced in Zambia and Nairobi, Kenya, before returning in 1986 with the dawn of President Yuri Museveni. She ran the parliamentary clinic then and treated senior army officers and their families, but work as a doctor soon became depressing. HIV AIDS was killing people. So every time you came in on Monday, they tell you this one passed away. And the place where I was working, those people travel so much. Men are such incredible people. When they travel, you know, they still pick up women out there, and therefore they all okay. Most of the drivers had died, a lot of the army people were dying. She didn't quit though. It was only after her husband passed on in 1994, shortly after he and his partners had founded Crown Beverages Limited, that she gave up practicing medicine. So I just had to take over what he was doing. That's how I got to leave uh, medicine and join business. It wasn't by choice. She met her husband while working as a receptionist during her A-level vacation. They dated throughout the time she was in medical school and married immediately after her graduation. I was from Gayasa, he was from Budo. That always seems to be an annoying match <laughs> made in heaven. <laughs> but 21 years later, she remains a widow. I wonder why she is not remarried. I guess I have some pretty high standards as to who I marry. <laughs> and it was difficult to follow my husband. It was. He really was, you know, the best thing that happened to me. I got suggestions. You can be a co-wife. No. <laughs> so Her three children, Freddie the eldest, Michelle his follower, and Daniel, were old enough and in boarding school when their father passed on. She found it easier to cope. I had the time to focus on my business, on the business, learn it. First of all, medical doctor into business is a fish out of water. At Crown Beverages, Dr. Chigozi was launched into the business world from where she grew, joined the Uganda Manufacturers Association as a board member, and finally, government as head of the investment authority. Government has often been accused of favoring foreign investors against Ugandans. Some foreign investors might get a piece of land. Okay, but that's one investor who gets a piece of land. We have foreigners in Uganda, over 2,000. BMK wanted uh, to put a swimming pool, so he was given some of that centenary park land in order to put it. And he's a local investor, so I don't hear any complaint about that one. Our problem as local investors often is we don't find out. 
what the benefits are. I know some very large investors, local investors, who get all the incentives, but who are the biggest complainers about other people getting the incentives. Dr. Chigozi is passionate about sports, and in her younger days, she did her bit. No surprise there, since she comes from a sporting family, the Bleaks. She feels that sport has been relegated to the fringes. So it really is, uh, you know, a sector that if we want to promote nationalism, that's the way to do it. The media also takes some flack from her. We are champions in netball for the Africa Cup for a number of years and nobody knows it. One of her sons, Daniel Chigozi, commonly known as Navio, is a renowned rapper. As with most people in the entertainment industry, Navio has had his share of bad days in the media. But his mother is not worried about that. She is confident she trained him well. He, 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 he can handle. But when they take on his mother and say something about his mother, uh, that's when he gets really upset. On the people she has admired and learned from, Dr. Chigozi is quick to mention the late businessman, Dr. James Murwana. He really liked to support women. I think he was preparing me for to chair the Uganda Manufacturers Association. And President Yuri Museveni. We watched him win a war with a little army of, you know, ragtag little boys and girls. Her happiest memories? In my youth, my father. Wonderful memory. <laughs> He's just there. Uh, happy memory later on, my husband. And the worst moment was the day her husband died. I had gone to visit the kids. Uh, Turi, my children were in Kenya, Kenya uh, schools, and he got a heart attack on a Friday night. Visit, visit, what they call visit was on Saturday. So yes, we're not around. So that was bad. That was devastating. But she has managed to pick herself up and build her family. She learned some lessons though from his death. I was very lucky. My husband was really, really organized. So he actually left her well. Otherwise, you get kicked out of the house, you get kicked out with your children, if you're lucky, with your children or without them. And the second lesson? We'll find everybody's willing to help everybody, but they're really not there. They are really not there. So sit down, <laughs> focus, and do it yourself. <laughs> Josephine Karunji, NTV.